Welcome to lesson one. During this lesson, you will learn about the tiles, the groupings, and the naming conventions. So let's go ahead and get started. In American Mahjong, we have three suits, the bams, the dots, and the cracks, very much like suits in card games. The first suit you see here are the cracks, and there are four of each tile numbered one through nine, totaling 36 tiles in all. Please note that the primary color on these crack tiles is red. Then we have our dots. This suit tile doesn't have any primary color, but we're gonna talk more about that a bit later. But there are four of each of these also numbered one through nine for a total of 36 tiles. Then we move on to the BAMs, the last of the three suits. And if you look at the BAMs, you will notice that the design looks very much like a bamboo stalk and the primary color is green. There are four of these, totaling 36 as well. Now let's take a closer look at the one BAM. The one BAM doesn't look like the other tiles here. The one BAM is a bird, and it can be any bird at all. So in various sets, you'll see all sorts of birds, from owls to peacocks to sparrows and a variety. So just remember, a one BAM is a bird. Then we have our wind tiles. We have our north winds shown here, and there are four of each of these wind tiles. Then we have our east tiles, and there are four of each of these wind tiles as well. The next wind tiles are the west, and there are also four of these tiles. Then we move on to the last of our wind tiles, and that is our south. There are four of these as well. We now have 16 in all. Please note that if you were to spell out N-E-W-S, you get the word news. And when we learn about the card, you'll learn about more about the relevance of the word news. Now we go on and learn about our dragon tiles. The first here are our reds, and they look very much like a red dragon. We have four of each of these. Then we have our green dragons, and yes, these are green in color and they look very much like a dragon. I do want to mention that the red and green dragons don't always look like dragons in every Mahjong set. In some sets, these red and green dragons look like Chinese characters. The significance of these characters or symbols is said to have significance in the Chinese culture. And finally, we have our white dragon, also known as soap, for a total of 12 dragons in all. Legend has it that many years ago, players reached out to the National Mahjong League requesting that they change the name of the white dragon to soap, stating that the white dragon tile looked a lot more like a small bar of soap than its name, white dragon. The league decided that they would allow the use of the name soap in addition to white dragon. So today, when we discard a white dragon tile, it is acceptable to say either white or soap. Now we're gonna revisit our white or soap dragon tile because I refer to this tile as our Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde tiles because when used in a 2023 section, they are used as zeros. And you'll see how this plays out when we learn about the card in the next lesson. The next tiles are the flower tiles, and there are eight of these. Please note that on the tile there are numbers and some letters which are actually abbreviations of the seasons 
These mean absolutely nothing when playing American Mahjong. And then we have our Joker tiles, and there are eight of these tiles. We're going to be talking a lot about Jokers in the coming lessons, but I do want to mention that there are times when you cannot use Jokers, and that would be when using them in a single grouping or in a pair. And you're going to learn more about these groupings coming up in a little bit in this lesson. And there are times when you can use jokers. And that would be in a Pung, a Kong, or a Quint. And again, we will be talking more about those groupings coming up a little later in this lesson. Now we move on to our Suit Dragon partnerships. The first partnership is the Red Dragon and the Cracks. And because these match in color, it's very easy to remember this partnership. The next partnership we have, and the Green Dragon and the Bams are green in color, so it's very easy as well to identify this partnership. Now finally, we move on to the very last of the partnerships, and that is the dots and the soap. Now, these suit tiles do not have a predominant color. So to help you remember this partnership, you could look at both of these tiles, both the dot symbol on the suit tile and the dragon tile as being geometrically shaped. And the soap is white with a predominant black rectangle most of the time. Or you could remember the term soapy bubbles. So you've got the dots that look like bubbles and you've got the dragon that looks like a small soap. And this could be an easy way to remember this match. Next up are tile groupings. The first grouping we're going to talk about are single tiles. And single tiles are tiles that sit next to each other but do not match, as you could see in each one of these pictures. Now, the first grouping that you see is a 2023. There you have the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde tile we spoke about earlier, sitting right between the two and the two three year tiles. Our next grouping is the pair. And a pair are any two tiles that sit next to each other that match. Now this can be any tile with the exception of the Joker. A pair can be two flowers, two dragons, two wind tiles, two suit tiles. But keep in mind, as we learned earlier, you cannot use a joker in either a single grouping or in a pair. The next grouping is the pung, and a pung is three like tiles sitting next to each other. And it can be any of the tiles, including jokers. Since you can use jokers in a pung, it would be acceptable to use one joker, two, or even three. Then we move on to our Kong. And a Kong is any four like tiles. Again, any of the tiles, flowers, dragons, winds, and it can even be jokers. One or all can be used as jokers in this grouping. And finally, we move on to the grouping called quint. And of course, we all know quints equal five. So in this grouping, we have a unique situation. Since there are only four of each of the tiles, except for flowers, you must use jokers to complete a quint. The only grouping that you wouldn't have to use a joker in would be a grouping of flowers because there are eight flowers. 
Okay, now, if you're lucky enough to get all of the Jokers, you possibly could be using five Jokers in a quint as well. Finally, we move on to tile naming. And at this point, I'd like you to pause the video so you could read the cartoon. In America, we've changed the names up a bit of the tiles. And since this is a pick and discard game, you must, in American Mahjong, name the tile when it is discarded. So let's talk about the suit tiles. The cracks, dots, and bams are named by their number and their symbol. So one crack, two crack, three crack. The dots would be named one dot, two dot, three dot. No plurals are used. And the bams, one bam, two bam, three bam. The next we have are our wind tiles. And those are simply named by the wind directions, north, east, west, and south. The dragon tiles are named by their color, with the exception of the white dragon, which also can be named soap. So red, green, white, or soap. And we have our flowers. And our flowers are named simply flower. A flower is a flower is a flower. You do not add on the number or season abbreviation on the tiles to name them. Lastly, we have our jokers, and the jokers can be named three ways, either joker, same, or the previously discarded tile. You'll learn more about this further on in the lesson. Now, before you head over to lesson two, I encourage you to memorize the dragon suit partnerships. This is such an important piece when playing this game, and if you don't learn it by heart, you are going to limit yourself from growing and becoming a better Mahjong player. Go ahead and pause the video right now. Visualize in your mind which one of the suits goes with which of the dragons. Try it out, and then when you're ready, go on to the next slide. How did you do? If you didn't get them all right, don't worry. You'll get it with a little bit of practice and studying. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for lesson one. In the meantime, I want to encourage you to take your time with this lesson. Watch this video over and over again until you feel comfortable moving on to lesson two. And I'll see you in lesson two. And don't forget to subscribe to the MajCon YouTube channel and click on the bell so we stay connected and consider joining the MajCon Facebook group and Instagram page. If you need any help with this lesson or have any comments, feel free to email me at debbie at majcon.com.